Hey everybody, welcome to the Loose Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Josh. And I'm somebody, uh, Steve. All right. Anyways, welcome to Linux Cast. I know we haven't actually done this very much for lately. Uh, we've been having a hard time getting everybody in the room, uh, but three of us are here. Tyler is off doing something. Uh, I think he had some familial obligations or something this week, so he's off. It's just three of us, but we're going to talk about some Linuxy things. But first, as always, we're going to talk about what we've been up to recently in the open source universe. So, Josh, why don't you take us off first? What you been doing? Well, I think I missed the last two episodes. Uh, I think so. I might be wrong on that. But, you know, one of them, I went to Ohio Linux Fest where I got to hang out with OpenSUSE guys where they gave me not only not one, but two little stuffed, anal, uh, stuffed uh, geckos and uh, a water bottle that leaks water. I <laughs> uh, got to hang out with uh, the TrueNAS guys, which gave me this. Uh, this is not a pen. This is a screwdriver. Apparently, like, uh, you know, I can, like, unscrew the back and right there, there's little screwdriver bits. Uh, I'm still going to be using my old screwdriver because, you know, these bits are a little bit too small and fragile. So what oh, you're... oh, yeah, and and I also got a OpenSUSE flashlight. So OpenSUSE had the best swag, huh? Uh, they always have the best swag. If you're at a Linux ca- conference and, you're, and you see an OpenSUSE booth, go there and get everything that they will let you take. <laughs> you know, I don't. Ohio has its own Linux Fest. Does anybody know if Michigan has one? I've tried to look. I know they have. A, there's a Michigan lug that goes on every every two weeks or so. I've thought about. I have that saved in a calendar, so I'm thinking about joining that. So that'd be. It sounds pretty cool. I don't know if there's actually a, a fest in Michigan, and I've never actually. There might be one for Detroit, but that'd be about it. That's Detroit. It'd be like going to Cleveland. I mean, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, your Detroit is my Toledo. We don't talk about Toledo. <laughs> it reminds me of you guys ever seen Scary Movie Four? It's like Detroit before the aliens. It shows everything on fire. Then Detroit after the aliens it just shows everything on fire, but with aliens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those are good movies. Um, as you can tell, I'm very much not, in, you know, going to be on topic today. It's it's going to be fine. I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Uh, so other than going to the Linux uh, conference, you're running Linux from scratch. I hear this. Uh, yes, I am running Linux from scratch. Uh, I have spent uh, two and a half weeks uh, working on this. Uh, we have a super basic installation of minimum viable GUI plus terminal, and everything else on top is flat pack and snaps. Get so off the podcast, your, you got snaps. So you're saving yourself from compiling everything post-finishing by just using containers. Well, yes, because, you know, if 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 I'm going to make a distro, I'm going to make the distro right, and I'm just going to have minimum viable GUI plus terminal. Everything else is on top as a container. Okay, have you been able to... Here's a question. Have you, been, have you looked into getting DistroBox up and running? Uh, I was expecting that out, question. Turns out... That uh, building support for Docker and Podman is actually more of a pain in the butt than it is for Snap. Which Snap, I had to I had to apply ninety plus patches to the kernel just to be able to get the containerization working. Mm. And <laughs> Flatpak train... worked out of the box. I just installed a couple libraries and it was good to go. <laughs> I knew Matt was going to ask that question. Oh my god! I- I'm a fanboy. I can't help it. It's it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> I know. I need not, to get on top of that. I need to get on top of that because I couldn't get it running on the Steam Deck. Now the Steam Deck's gone. My uh, most recent uh, success on that is I needed Zoho. I wanted to try the Zoho Mail client, but the there wasn't an RPM uh, uh, package for it, so I downloaded it on my Arch container and just exported it. it works fine. I have a question regarding regarding that. Uh, uh, is it true what people say uh, when people say if you're on Arch you don't need containers because Arch has everything? Uh, is that true? No, yeah. Arch does not have everything. Almost everything. they have a lot of things, but not but not everything. Also, there's reasons why beyond just package availability that you'd want to use DistroBox. You want if you want things containerized with their own home directory or whatever, uh, you can do it that way. Like let's just say you wanted to have. This is just a, off the top of my head. Say you wanted to have Steam running, uh, but you didn't want it on your main machine for some reason. You wanted it in its own container, and you didn't want to use Flatpak for again whatever reason. Um, you could use the, you could use DistroBox to do that. And there are obviously more uh, pro- productivity, you know, 
focused reasons to do that, but yeah, there's many reasons to use DistroBox. Another reason is if an application is more stable on Debian, then yeah. Use well, it could also just be packaging reasons, because, you know, Arch Linux is famous for, hey, this feature quit working, we're just going to disable it in the package build, and we're just going to push the binary out. Too bad you can't get Grub in DistroBox. I'm just saying. Yep. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve, what have you been up to recently? Well, since I, I've, I've been out of the country for the past two weeks, uh, not much because, uh, well, I didn't have a Linux machine. <laughs> my brother was running Windows because my brother uh, is not a Linux person. And, He's uh, a normal person. Mm-hmm. He's running uh, Windows 11, and he was playing uh, his game. But uh, I did do a little bit. I My brother gave me a Dell XPS 9360, a 13-inch uh, laptop from 2017, a seventh, uh, Core i7 7th Gen, uh, with a 4K 13-inch 4K touchscreen, for whatever reason. Who would run a 4K resolution on 13 inches? I don't know. But uh, I installed... Zero G on Wayland using Wayland, uh, so I do have. Uh, uh, I'm starting to dip my toes into Wayland right now. So uh, let me get this straight: Josh is using Snaps, and you're using Wayland. It's like and Gnome. Are, on and, Gnome. And, and, and Gnome. It's like you're not even my friends anymore. What's wrong with you? You're you're be betraying me. It's like stabbing me right I never really in the back. hated Snaps to be honest with you. I just had some pain points with them, and you know, th since you know they 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 switched Firefox to a Snap, they fixed the biggest complaint that I had about them. Still slower than it needs to be, but it's definitely faster than it was. By, I'll, I, by I'll far, just, uh, I'll just fix the uh, the annoyance uh, a little bit. Uh, it's temporary, you know. Wayland is temporary. Uh, I want a full fledged Wayland uh, session with Hyperland for now. I want to mess around with Hyperland. Uh, and then I want to mess with other Wayland, that's like KDE, Zero, Zero Linux with, with uh, Zero Linux KDE edition on Wayland uh, on the laptop. It's, a, it's an ex experimentation laptop device, uh, basically. So I'm dipping my toes into Wayland like I promised everyone I would. I'm keeping my promise. Uh, just uh, not on my main rig. Uh, I, uh, the GPU is still. I'm gonna. I'm still gonna buy the GPU, but not right now. I'm, I'm waiting for the prices to go a little bit lower. Uh, but uh, for the time being, I'm using that laptop to dip my toes into the whole Wayland situation. Um, and uh, for whatever reason, there's an issue currently with Arch. There's a VPN package they decided to um, move to the AUR because. For whatever reason, the maintainer is no longer maintaining it, and the uh, one of the dependencies is stuck to the old version. So uh, I need to build new ISOs. So I'm working on that. And uh, other than that, uh, I'm enjoying uh, some gaming on Linux. So first, thanks to Nate for the super chat. I appreciate that. But for me, what I've been doing so. Just one thing that I did this week as I've been testing the awesomeness that is ButterFS. I uninstalled, so I, I made a snapshot, a manual snapshot. I uninstalled Plasma completely um, for fun and installed GNOME, messed around with GNOME, riced it, and got all the extensions, remembered why I hated GNOME, uh, and then did a rollback to the the snapshot that I created before I installed GNOME and uninstalled Plasma. So <laughs> that was fun. It worked flawlessly, by the way. Um, there you go. You're right there, Steve. Your uh, your chair looks like no, it's I'm, about. <laughs> it, 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 it's my chair. It's doing some weird shit. But uh, see, 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 GNOME works. GNOME works. It worked. I got rid of it very fast. It was there for like just long enough for me to take a screenshot. Um, anyways, that's what I did. Um, other than that, mostly I've been just working. So anyways, that's it for that segment. Let's go ahead and move on to the main topic. And this week's main topic was brought to us by our friend Josh. So Josh will be taking over the hosting duties from here until the end. So Josh, take us away, please. Well, you see, uh, Matt said that, hey, uh, y'all need to help me pick topics because, you know, I don't know... 
I don't know what topic we're going to pick with this weekly uh, podcast that we do here because, you know, a weekly schedule is really tough to maintain, as well, I can personally vouch. But, uh, you know, uh, I've decided, you know what, let's let's pick an interesting topic here. Is the Linux cast evil? Well, I don't think that he um, said that right. right. No, I don't think something. I did either. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 What just happened here? He just asked if the Linux cast was evil. I don't think the Linux cast was evil. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, maybe maybe the Linux Foundation. <laughs> See, this is why I'm so glad I took over. Because if you've been practicing the sentence for a whole week and you still got this one wrong. <laughs> No, actually, I was reading this uh, cry oxygen comment. <laughs> That's where I got that from. <laughs> oh, here's you a million. It. Here's a million for that joke. Oh, I thanks, bud. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, is the Linux Foundation evil? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so so for those of you that don't know, the Linux Foundation is a foundation that was started back in the year two thousand. But uh, by two, and it's a combination of these two two different groups that were helping fund uh, not just the the development of the Linux kernel, but several other projects as well. And uh, basically, what the, what they are is they're the foundation that currently handles the paychecks for uh, Linus Torvalds, the guy that that originally created Linux, and uh, Greg uh, Crow Hartman, which is the maintainer of the Linux LTS project, and and uh, several other developers that work on that, and uh, they also help. Fu- Fund and uh, fund initiatives and, uh, but they're basically just like the business people behind Linux. Now uh, that's generally what they are. <clears throat> when you now, mentioned uh, LT- when you mentioned LTS, uh, sorry, uh, I saw this today. Uh, is it true that the LTS is switching from six-year schedule to a two-year schedule? Yeah, that's the way it used to be. Oh, now it's two years. Yeah, okay. it's back to two years because you know it turns out that maintaining something for six years is kind of painful. Yeah. <laughs> Take it from somebody who's been maintaining something for three months. <laughs> well, I mean, because there's like there's like four dot whatever like the, one of the four series, several of the four series is still in support, right? Yep. Yeah. Four dot. It's, it's been a, been a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, so I just uh, I just this, wanted to mention that. The support for, of the Linux Foundation is what you would claim make, made it evil. What's your what's your re- rationale behind thinking that it might be evil, Josh? Okay, so Matt, if you can take a moment, I think in I think in like uh, the topic proposal in the Git repository, I actually put an article link in there, or which is basically just the covering of the Linux Foundation board. These are the people that control the Linux Foundation. Uh, if you look at all the names, they also have all the company names that those people work for underneath. That's where you see Microsoft, VMware, uh, Oracle, and a few other big names that uh, you might recognize from the techno- tech industry. Did you just mention Microsoft? Yes. Microsoft Linux. Oh. Yeah, Microsoft okay. loves Linux, right? So we're going to have a Microsoft Linux one day? Yeah, something like that. Uh, here, I, I already found it. I'll post it in a YouTube chat for you. Microsoft Linux. Yeah, Board of Directors. Interesting. Direct. We got, uh, VMware, Sony. Uh, two people listed for at, in the at-large director. I think they're, they're just uh, Linux Foundation employees. We have Intel, Huawei, uh, Renesas, Fujitsu, Tencent. Uh, Qualcomm Technologies, Meta, otherwise known as Facebook, Hitachi, Panasonic, Microsoft, Samsung, uh, GitHub, which we all know Microsoft owns GitHub, uh, Ericsson, NEC, Intel, Red Hat, Oracle, and uh, Jim Zemlin with the, with the Linux Foundation proper. And you said Tencent. Tencent is as in Tencent, the uh, people behind uh, PUBG and stuff like that. Yeah, they own PUBG, uh, Fortnite. Uh, they have like a ninety percent ownership of Riot Games. They also own TikTok. Oh, because uh, my brother, my brother uh, who work, uh, who handles Papa John's, uh, did a, uh, signed an IP with them, an IPO or something, 
now they have uh, PUBG on the boxes of Papa John. Yep. Now, oh, cool. uh, what the reason why I ask, is the Linux Foundation evil? Is because not that long ago, they actually used to have a chair that was dedicated for the community. And uh, generally, people people from the community would elect a developer to work to sit in the community chair of the Linux Foundation. Well, so, uh, VMware, which you might you might know for their product of ESXi, which is a uh, hypervisor, uh, is is a Linux based operating system, and yes. uh, basically, they never contributed anything to the Linux kernel, nor did they post any of their kernel patches to a public repository so they weren't contributing to the gpl this was and this marks the the largest uh, gpl violation in the history of the gpl license i was going to say like financially i was now, going to say it's a violation now the linux foundation you can buy a chair in the linux foundation for five hundred thousand dollars you could buy a seat on the board you can so buy a seat than, Buy yeah. a seat, so even if you don't do anything to uh, yeah. contribute anything, just buy a seat. Yeah, so what VMware did was they bought a seat. And with and when they bought a seat on the Linux Foundation, they pushed forward a proposal to the board of directors to eliminate the community chair, of which they, vote, they approved. Uh-oh. That's a big no-no. Um, yeah. I would agree that this is something uh, negative. Um, what the hell? What? So basically, you can you can buy a, th- a a place on the throne, and then you propose evil things, and you can get away with it because you bought a seat. I mean, are we surprised all that much? But also. The Linux Foundation wow. is not a community focused thing. At least I've never seen it as one. So I'm not surprised that that happened. It's since they've been more corporately based. It's always has it always been corporate sponsored for like, since the beginning of it, Josh? You know the history better than uh, I do. Uh initially no, it was not, but the corporations have basically moved in. Okay. Um also I I, I think I saw comments Somebody's like, well, what does this have to do with, you know, regular everyday Linux users? The thing is that you, one thing you have to understand is that they, this isn't a desktop Linux thing. I don't, I mean, they're, it, the reason it why the corporate. It trickles down. It, it, it well, trickle, the, deci- the decisions, we suffer the decisions uh, that trickle down. Because um, you got Intel, Microsoft, like especially, specifically uh, Intel, because they're responsible for the uh CPU microcode and their CPU microcode and uh, a lot of a, a lot of hardware based microcodes and drivers and stuff like that. M- mainly the Arc GPUs that Josh keeps shoving in our face every episode. I've still got the box; it's sitting back there on a <laughs> shelf. <laughs> okay, so uh, to to help guide you guys in that, uh, the they uh, pay for the development of the Linux kernel. Uh, they they control the uh, group that that runs automotive grade Linux, which is basically what all the all the U.S. auto manufacturers are moving towards. Besides Tesla, because Tesla already made their own thing. Uh, they also control. Uh, they also have a controlling stake in the Open 3D Foundation, which uh, th- those are people that guide projects such as Blender, and then uh, the OpenJS uh, Foundation, which I. I'm not 100% certain, but th- I think that they have something to do with uh, several JavaScript libraries that are very popular. Yeah. Now, uh, the re- how uh, this would affect the user is, say that, like, Big Daddy Linux Foundation, uh, you know, who pays for the Linux development of the Linux kernel, says, hey, uh, Mr. Linus, can you just, like, approve this patch without actually reviewing it? Well... We'll uh, grab our wallet here, and uh, we'll we'll hand this corporate credit card to you if you do. Of course, Linus uh, can only say, um, "Okay." Now, uh, in in the event that you don't know, open source developers typically don't make a lot of money. 
Duh. Uh, Lin- Linus makes it probably th- the nicest paycheck out of anybody that actually develops open source code. Plus, he made but, a, a mint back in the 90s, so. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if it's, say, like, a million dollars for a one-time thing. Wow. So, basically, uh, uh, the way you're describing the, the Linux Foundation is Don Corleone. Something like that. Yeah, Don Corleone. I'm going to make him an offer they can't rebu- refuse. Well, he can refuse it, but, you know, I, w- I, w- I, w- I honestly uh, would... There, there's probably plenty of people that would say you sh- he should just take in the money for Linux and do something else. <laughs> Dude, recently with the with the six point two kernel and the Arc GPUs, that's what Intel did with with Linus. They 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 went through the Linux Foundation and they brought him a very handsome paycheck to include proprietary code in his kernel. Well, there's all kinds of proprietary code that have been in the kernel, even be, even stretching from before the uh, Linux Foundation establishment. So that's not exactly untrue. Well, I'm not saying this but, is the uh, first time. I'm just saying that it's one of the uh, situations that confirms what you are saying. Is uh, They sat down, uh, uh, Linus and the Intel guy, and they were talking, uh, including uh, new, new proprietary code in the 6.2 kernel. So, well, yeah. and he, he he was like, yeah, of course. Correct me if I'm wrong, though, Intel does quite a bit of Linux development and contribution as well, so it's not as if they're yeah. just saying, hey. Yeah, they do. Uh, they, they, their, uh, their open source, con- their contributions alone for not just Linux, but like the, the various BSD kernels that they uh, contribute driver, drivers towards, uh, they, of all the GPU manufacturers, Intel is your friend. <laughs> Well, yes and no. Uh, yes, when we say they have the highest number of uh, open source contributions, but they also have proprietary uh, stuff on the other side. Well, yeah. So, uh, and proprietary stuff in the kernel. So, I'm like, how can Linus accept such things if the whole ideology behind the, the Linux kernel is to be open free and open source. Well, the that that's where the Linux Foundation comes in. He needs incentive to do that, and that incentive is the Linux Foundation. Well, also the Linux kernel, yes, is free and open source, but it's not as, as regiment. It it's not as regimentally. It's not as what's the word that I'm looking for. It's it, it's not they're they're not as tied to free and open source as like the GNU project is, for example, right? Uh, that's the reason why there has been proprietary blobs in the kernel for yeah, quite a long time. Not like the GNU, not like the GNU Libre project. Yeah, or GNU Herd, if if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. So uh, yeah, we were talking about technology. We were talking about corporations and their contributions to the Linux kernel. I just found this. This is from. This is not very recent, but this is from the five point ten um, kernel. So the, the Huawei was the number one employer of Linux kernel developers uh, at eight point nine percent of commits. Intel was number two at eight percent. Uh, six point six and five point nine were unknown and none. Then he had Red Hat, Google, AMD, Lenaro, uh, which I've never heard of, uh, Samsung, IBM, NXP, Facebook, Oracle, SUSE, uh, Code, Aura, Forum, ARM, Renaissance Electronics, NVIDIA, and Texas Instruments. Uh, NVIDIA? Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Good old NVIDIA. Well, uh, that that was also about when they were starting starting to uh, rewrite their driver in, into uh, the open source driver too. So yeah, that might be why. I didn't find the more recent ones. I didn't. This is just what I found first. So, so yes, corporations do influence through the the Linux Foundation, but a lot of them also contribute back to it as well. And there, what I was going to say earlier was that 
a lot of the corporations are interested in this because they use it on servers. That's it's all enterprises. The reason why they're interested, not not a single one of them care about the. The, the Linux Foundation has no interest whatsoever in desktop Linux. That's the reason why they all use Macs. We know whoa. that. Whoa. Right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. They use Macs? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're business people. They're not really developers. <laughs> well, <laughs> true, true. But, but yeah, if, uh, you, if you go to all of the Linux conferences, all the people that are giving presentations, they gener they're generally not using Linux computers to, to uh, run, run the uh, conferences. Yeah, but uh, what I was going to say uh, was that, yes, cor corporations kind of help and are re are needed in some in some areas for, for Linux to somewhat grow in the enterprise uh, world and the server world. So I don't see them uh, as evil in that area, but w where they are, uh, where we they can tend to be seen as evil is when their uh, their iffy decisions corporate decisions trickle down to desktop linux because sometimes they do they a lot of uh, some of their decisions uh, slip through and end up uh, affecting desktop linux so take do uh, that's how it is that's how it can per be perceived as evil but otherwise, I don't see it as evil and nothing but evil. Uh, this is my point of view, anyway. They are only evil if they their decisions end up on the desktop Linux realm. Otherwise, who cares? Let them well, do whatever I, they want to do. I do uh, agree that these corporations should probably be involved in in Linux kernel development. Yeah, they help the kernel. They, they help the kernel grow. But uh, I I really do think that they that uh, with the Linux kernel being being maintained in this open source manner, uh, the only the only company that is on the Linux Foundation board that, or at least the only company name that I see that on there that I particularly don't mind being there, uh, because you know they do have some interest in in desktop Linux is Red Hat. Because uh, you know Red Hat they they also maintain maintain a a uh, the no the gnome foundation uh they are big they are big drivers of like uh developing developing and maintaining gnome itself on uh both red hat linux and fedora of which uh you know and uh they i think there's something like 50 percent of the people that make contributions on gnome on the gnome's gitlab page but uh i i think that they're the only ones that have an interest in desktop linux so uh, I do think that the corporation should be there, but I also think that they that there should still be a community chair. You you know that the seats are bought and paid for when they have levels. So they have gold director and uh, silver director. <laughs> like, like you yeah. like, like they have like oh you know those guys paid extra money for a special colored seat. <laughs> so the thing that so. I think that what side you come down on this really does depend on where you are in the whole corporation influence and Linux thing. So uh, we, we've talked about on the podcast before about how big corporations like Canonical and Red Hat and SUSE, how they have an inordinate influence on desktop Linux because they control the largest, you know, distros that are out there for the most part you know outside of arch like arch and is like the the big distro out there that's not corporately in, influenced by corporations the rest uh, of them can i raise you debian uh, and debian i forgot about, sorry yeah debian sorry <laughs> Debian's forgot, bigger than arch forgot about <laughs> debian um how did i forget about debian I, I think i've been spending too much time with debian lately i just wanted to forget about it for a little while um anyways but yeah debian and arch those are the two, two examples of non-corporate influenced distros out there and the rest of them basically are run by them the, the big ones anyway you know they got a lot of bunch of small ones obviously that aren't but um and, and where you come down on the whole evilness of the linux foundation i think is kind of tied to do you think that the influence of corporations period is evil if so then your answer to this is obviously yes or to or do you think that in some situations corporate influence can be positive so for me personally, I can, it's a it's a weird position for me to be in, but I think it, 
yes, corporations do evil things because they're influenced by one purpose only, which is making money. But also, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily always evil because obviously, uh, every time someone comes up to me and says, Matt, uh, I don't like the influence of Red Hat or Canonical with Linux, I, I ask them, do you like Linux? <laughs> because without Canonical, without Red Hat, without the developers that work for them, without their money financing the development of these technologies, Linux would be back in the 90s still, right? We'd still have horrible audio. We, we'd, ha we'd still be using Xorg, but worse, um, like really old, old Xorg, you know, and we'd, we'd have, uh, for all of you Wayland fans, there'd be no Wayland, there'd be no System D, there'd be, you know, you name the technology. There'd be no Pulse Audio. There'd be no Pulse Audio. You know, there, you name the technology that has made Linux usable over the last 15 years, it was probably developed by, or at least financed by, a corporation of, of some kind. Now, you can take that argument in another direction and say, yes, we can put up with the the influence of Red Hat and Canonical and SUSE and whatever because they have a dedicate they have a a you know iron in the fire they 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 have a interest in Linux themselves because it's their business right whereas like Microsoft or you know Facebook or Fujitsu or let's say some like Huawei or VMware or Sony well first of all Sony the fuck Sony you got a chair on the board for um, you make cameras, dude. bro. Uh, TVs, uh, I, dude. TVs. The TV uh, is based on Android, and Android is well, uses the Linux kernel. Somebody was gonna say PlayStation, but PlayStation used the BS uses BSD. So yeah, they're built off of free BSD. So I don't really know what they're using, what they would be using Linux for. I don't know. The, the smart TVs, Maybe Android, a, Android smart TVs. But they don't. They're just using Google TV. That's good. That that'd be a reason for Google to have a chair on the uh, the thing, not. Yeah, maybe uh, something. Maybe something with the cameras. Could be. Maybe, maybe the cameras have a like a Linux kernel running on them. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. <laughs> uh, Who knows? Uh, you know, anyway, so you can you can kind of. I guess it really does depend for me personally what corporation is having influence because, uh, you know, I, I'm perfectly fine with Canonical and Red Hat and Sousa and. and I'm gonna say something horrible. Maybe even Oracle. Um, that that t that tasted bad. But when it comes to like Microsoft and and you know all the the like and Fujitsu and Tencent, like what the why, why do you need influence over the the Linux kernel? What do you, it feels more nefarious when they do it than whether than the other guys does. That's just my point of view. Well, I do think I I do think uh, that Fujitsu. And uh, Huawei, while they seem a little weird, I I do believe that they are using a Linux, a Linux stack for for their embedded devices. Well, and networking, right? A lot, yeah. a lot of that stuff is 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 a lot of their interest there is networking, and and a lot of these companies you can see like VMware, you can understand, you know, because virtual machines and stuff like that. Intel obviously has a big big deal because of the you know CPU processors and GPUs and stuff like that. Uh, some of them you just like. What like Tencent? What possible? I mean, Tencent's not developing games for Linux. They're, I don't think, uh, no. are they? I, I, I don't even think Tencent does anything themselves. They buy other companies, companies. to do things for them. Yeah. Um. And like, I guess Meta, Meta, you can kind of understand because they're probably running Linux on their servers and stuff. Um. Their Oculus, their Oculus stuff. But, don't they run? That's Linux? Meta. Oculus is meta. Yeah, that's why I said meta. Yeah. Um, yeah the, um, the, when then you have some weird ones, like you have like Panasonic, like isn't Panas is it Panasonic still the thing? Uh, it, yeah. It's like they, radio, they have those uh, Radio have Shack those, of, of of TVs back in the day. No, no Panasonic st still have those portable uh, audio players like Sony's uh, Walkman line. They run they run a sort of a Linux. Uh, Panasonic is also the OEM distributor for uh, Chrysler car radios. Yeah. How do you oh, know yeah. these things? Like, I might own a couple Chryslers, and maybe that's how I know. <laughs> Just you, you need to get on Jeopardy or something, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, that's Joshy boy. 
That's not even a Linux thing. I just know that off the top of my head. <laughs> weird, weird trivia topics. But but yeah, Panasonic in general, like uh, they they still they still sell and make cheap cheap home audio equipment. Like a uh, like uh, a lot of the sound, and uh, they work as an OEM distributor for a lot of other projects too. Like uh, you know, they might just remove the Panasonic label and put like a TLC lo- logo on the sound bar or something it's like, like that. It's like having RCA on the board. Also, yeah. RCA still in business, by the way, uh, yes, going they strong. Are. Uh, <laughs> so, so let's come up with a different. It'd be like having Kodak on the board because I don't think actually. I think Kodak is actually gone. I. No, they're not. Actually, they're, they're not actually. <laughs> no. like, they, yeah, they filed for bankruptcy, so I know for sure they filed for bankruptcy. But they are no, still no, actually because... still. I know that they're. I know that they're the only company that still produces film. Yes. Uh, the reason, the reason, the reason I know that is because I'm into a, uh, the technicalities behind filmmaking. Uh, there are still directors that refuse to go digital, and they use Kodak and uh, Kodak oh, yeah. uh, film and uh, Fuji film. I, I don't blame them for not going digital. There are some advantages to film when it comes to like image quality. You can still get yes. them on the New York Stock Exchange for four dollars and sixteen cents. Yeah, there yep. we go. There are Wall Street bets right there. How many pe- how many people are uh, you know uh, undervaluing that? Let's. Yeah, I'm not gonna take a moment to look into that. Not right now. So their their 52 week high oh. at six dollars and thirty four cents. So you could have made some money, man. <laughs> I could have. I could have. Yeah, but uh, I I I think they should. Uh, the Linux Foundation is uh, is evil. Yes, but. Is it evil for us desktop Linux users? Not so much. Yeah, that's that's simplifying it. It's uh, for us desktop users. We just sit back and watch. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to uh, VMware buying a seat, when you said VMware bought a seat, uh, well, VMware has a lot of their uh, technologies running on Linux. So okay, they did not. They they did a felony here where they're not sharing. Yes, but. At some point, they will, and their their input will be, will will be super helpful because we do use VMware on Linux. So yeah, but other than that, I don't know. This topic is kind of weird. <laughs> There's a lot of silence. I'm trying to think of something to say, but ain't nothing I can. Well, come I up think with. we already beat the. Su- I think we beat the subject down pretty I think hard. It, let's change the topic <laughs> for just one moment. Let's talk about Microsoft in specific because Microsoft is the big. I mean, and technically, I suppose you could consider Google also equally as big in terms of the uh, in, influence on Linux. But you hear more stuff about Linux and Microsoft together, right? Because Microsoft's always doing things together. You know, WSL and you, do. you know, and and they're talking about you know their own little Linux distribution and stuff like that. So let me ask you this question, just to kind of fill this out a little bit. What do you guys think the future of Windows actually is? Do you think that the Windows will continue to use the, the current thing that they do, or will they go to a, a Linux kernel in the future? Windows will still continue using the NT kernel for as long as they possibly can. Yes, I agree. 100%. Because there, there are some advantages to the NT kernel. For one thing, they know how it works. <laughs> Another thing is there is so much software that, co- that uses hardware kernel calls directly that I don't think that they I don't think for legacy support reasons which you know Microsoft does a fantastic job of legacy support uh, I don't think that they can ever switch off of the NT kernel or a translation layer for the NT kernel that's why they're having problems with ARM right? yeah that's actually why that's why they have so many issues with ARM they're going to continue doing it the, the way they are and uh, WSL will continue to grow they have already a, tech, a Linux technology that works on uh, on Windows called WSL, so that covers that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I tried to get us uh, to talk more. All right, let's go I'm ahead. Sorry. It's fine. <laughs> I thought we're, it would we're be kind. Con- end on time for once. <laughs> I thought we were going to talk, have a little bit of controversy here, but it's not. It didn't happen. Anyways, let's before we jump into the thingies of the week, let's talk about the contact information. You can find us at all sorts of places online, but the best place is the website. Linuxcast.org is the website. There you'll find previous episodes all the way back to season one, and you'll also find blog posts when I 
post them. Uh, I have several posted on Patreon that have been exclusive there for quite a while, but I and I haven't posted them on the website yet. That'll happen eventually when I, I remember. <laughs> I, I do get that uh, habit sometimes. Anyways, you can find all that stuff there. You can find Josh at tenleyj.com slash you changed it. It's contact. Slash contact. I like stalker because yep. I can remember it. So tenleyj.com slash well, Contact. soccer still works. Okay. Soccer still works. Okay, good. So if I mess that up, I'm not screwing anybody. Good. Um, S- Steve is on Mastodon at Fossodon.org slash at zero Linux. I'm doing this without in front of me, by the way. So I'm, I'm just completely off memory. Uh, so you can follow him over there. He also has a YouTube channel, which he no longer uses for a while. He's taking a break. He, he's on Discord and patreon he's, not, he's on coffee and all those places so all that stuff if you want to find all of our contact information you can do so at the linuxcast.org slash contact there you'll find links to the discord and all that stuff if you want to support the channel you can do so at shop.thelinuxcast.org there you'll find some merch which is awesome you can also do patreon or Kofi. both of those links again at the linuxcast.org slash contact uh, also like and subscribe um so I appreciate that. So there's the contact information. Let's go ahead and move into the thingies of the week. Josh, your thingy of the oh. week, please. Uh, my thingy of the week might be something after your your uh, near and dear heart because, you know, you're using Kate, which means that you're slowly going to be using more KDE-specific applications. So uh, I'm going to bust out the good old faithful MPV plus a client, and that's called the Haruna Media Player. Uh, ba- basically, all it is is just a graphical front end for MPV, which if you've if you use Linux and you're especially a big fan of the tiling window managers, you've probably used MPV once or twice in your life. Uh, it is it is honestly like the best video player that you can have that's not called VLC. <laughs> and uh, this is just a front end for it. Have you used uh, MPV have a GUI already? It does. This is a better one. Te- it, okay. Technically, it does. It just doesn't have a ton of options. Most of your configuration and stuff is done in a configuration file and stuff. So if yeah. you want to have a uh, KDE-like experience when it comes to configuration, Haruna is the best way to go. Uh, oh, cool. If you want to have a more GTK-like, there's one, there's a front end for uh, GTK as well. I don't remember yeah, what it's, it's called. Yeah, called Celluloid. Celluloid. That was the name. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, I've, I've actually made a video on Haruna. I've made videos on everything, oh. apparently. Apparently. I mean, you've definitely... Put- You've definitely got a lot of videos on your channel. I do. None of them are any good, according to Josh. All right. Nope, they all suck. They all suck. Um, thank you. This is my friend, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, Steve, <laughs> your thingy of the week. My thingy of the week is a game. Uh, everybody heard of it. Everybody's playing it. Uh, it's called Bal- Baldur's Gate 3. I'm and, not playing it. Uh, I... Wait, wait. There's a third one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the, the reason I'm making it the thingy of the week is because I just got into it today. I played for, I don't know, 45 minutes total, and I already fell in love with it. Because you can you can create all sort of characters. All genders are accepted, just to be YouTube-friendly. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Uh, you can... And and the best part of uh, of the game, I saw it at my brother's place. He, he He's very far along into the game. Like, uh, you can, if you if you don't have enough gold to buy stuff from the stores, you can pickpocket the sto- the shop owner. You just have to do it with tact, and you have to figure out how to do it without getting caught. Uh, and the and there's another thing you can be one thing. Let's say you're an elf while pickpocketing, you can transform into a midget or a hobbit or whatever you want, and go hide somewhere uh, so you don't get caught. It's it's so big. This game is so big and so well done, and the story is amazing, and it's so so so. Uh, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying every part of it. I enjoyed every minute of those forty five minutes. Uh, I'm just waiting to download the rest of the updates because I have the GOG version uh, version, and it has received a total of thirteen patches so far, and the patches total seventeen gigabytes. So I'm waiting to finish downloading those, update the game to the latest, and can uh, resume. And it's running at uh, 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 70 plus uh, FPS on my old aging 1080 at ultra setting. This is a well-optimized game. I haven't enjoyed a well-optimized game in ages. 
and it runs flawless on Linux. I'm using, I'm launching, and this is the very first GOG game that I cannot launch directly from the shortcut it creates on the desktop. Uh, so I'm launching it using bottles, and it just works. It just works. No need for shenanigans or special configurations or anything. It runs, and it runs beautifully. So if you haven't checked that game out, check it out. It's awesome. Cool. I'm not buying any more games right now. I can't. That's fine. <laughs> One thing that I really appreciate from Baldur's Gate is, you know, back when I had a less reliable internet connection, the the day one download of, of, of Baldur's Gate actually worked, which is not something you can say about modern video games. Everybody note that every time he mentions his internet connection, he has to rub it in that he has now has fiber, okay? Uh, I do have fiber. <laughs> well, it's a fiber backend. It's not actually a fiber connection. I'm still connecting via DSL over a fiber backend, but uh, that's going to that's going to change. He'll be mentioning this now for the next three years, at least. Every episode. Yep. All right. I'm going gigabit. <laughs> I, like, I've had gigabit, like, for, and it's not fiber, but that's the reason why my upload speeds suck. But I, I don't mention it, because I don't have to mention it. Uh, it's coaxial? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Like I, like I had in Ireland. So I, I, could, I could go up to 1.2, but they want, like, a, a lot more expensive, for a lot more money for the extra 0.2 of a gig. I don't really need it. So, um, honestly, I don't need gig, to be honest with you. Because... I think it'd be more impressive that internet speed if the upload speeds weren't like not gig. <laughs> I'm thinking, like well, also, uh, 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 also when you have a fast internet, uh, you uh, you you would need to buy a lot of hard drives because you'll be downloading a shit ton. <laughs> so I don't find that I do really. I, I I'm fully expecting to uh, attempt a couple downloads. You know, once you know I actually have something greater than a 25 megabit download speed. <laughs> So what he's but saying is he's bragging I, about having fiber, but he doesn't actually have the benefits of fiber yet. Well, I, I already said that. Right, I know, but I'm, what I'm saying is that <laughs> we just wait until he has the benefits of fiber, then it's going to be ten times worse. All right. It, it'll be weekly streams, <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> All right, that's going to be some distro hacking right there. Um, he's going to compile the entire Gen 2 repository. <laughs> you just gave him an idea. I've done what it did before. you just do? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, my thingy of the week is Ivory. I've uh, been using Ivory now for a little while. It is a Mastodon client, and if you ha have an iOS device and you need a Mastodon client, it's probably the best one. It is very well designed. It's the same guy who did um, TapBots if you, for Twitter back when third-party Twitter clients was a thing. Uh, and it's like I said, it's very well designed. It does cost money, so if you, if you are... Uh, wanting to use it's it on getting... iOS, so it does cost money, definitely. Yeah, well, I mean, th there are free Mastodon clients on iOS if you if you want to use them. Yeah, um, I'm using one, but um, Ivory is is good, has a lot all the features that you want, and very well designed. One thing I'll say after going back to iOS is that that I often forget after having been on uh, Android for three years, is that the the applications on iOS are ten times better than Android. I'm just saying, it's just in terms of oh, des design and Matt? and and you know, functionality and performance way better than Android. It's Matt, nuts. I bow to you now. I just bow to you because you said the magic word, the uh, the uh, the applications, uh, they're like, it's like GNOME. On GNOME, the GNOME su suite of application, applications, they're amazing. Okay, I don't care if you hate GNOME, but if you compare the, uh, the GNOME applications versus the KDE applications or the Qt applications, uh, GNOME just beats them no hands down same thing I still with iOS. can't find a good music player that is written in QT <laughs> they well, all kind of suck yeah, yeah they all kind of suck I, I, but on GTK I've I've sat on rhythm box for 10 years now I'm not switching off of anything else <laughs> I've been I've been using Amarok for the past year but eh, anyway and Clementine uh, the, is fucking ugly man yeah I hate that design the, uh, the when you there's another thing about when you said, I'm doing the opposite of you. Uh, I have the, the iPhone, but since I traveled the past, few, uh, past couple of weeks, uh, I realized that eSIMs suck. Oh, like they're you horrible. I, Bad. No good. eSIMs suck. So I, I'm, I'm currently looking for a, uh, a phone, 
an Android phone as a secondary travel phone, and I'm going to be using it here as a, a hotspot thing. There are inexpensive phones that are good, I realize. Well, that, that's one place where Android has the the win is if you want a cheap phone, you can go there and get one. Yeah, I found I found a $100 phone, $100. Just a $100 bill will get you a phone that has 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, 120 hertz display. Dude, to get those specs on uh, on I on, uh, on the Apple side, that's a minimum of seven hundred dollars. I'm like, uh, but the caveat with Android is very apparent: is when you buy those, like in in Lebanon, the major brand is Techno. Uh, so those have two year uh, software update with one extra year of security update, so a total of three years. So after those three years, you can chuck this phone uh, in the garbage unless you want to flash it and put some weird OS on it that would help. I'm not interested in all these things. So, But those phones are cheap enough to, once they're done, chuck away, buy a new one. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm doing that. But yeah, uh, Ivory on iOS is an amazing application. And, it, and there's a tidbit nobody knows. The guy who created Tapbots and, by extension, Ivory, the, the main guy, the head guy, is from Lebanese origins. <laughs> Hope everyone so, was yeah. wearing headphones when he did that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we Lebanese are all over the place. <laughs> you can't get rid of them. <laughs> nope. We're a virus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it for this episode of the Linux cast, guys. We've had a, a good time. I know the topic, you know, we had some trouble getting into the topic. We're, we'll. It's, it's just because it was topic. such a blatant, jo obvious thing. is obviously evil because Josh came up with it. <laughs> I well, mean, look, next look, first topic. of all, hold on a second, hold on a second. No, no, no just to shut up, Steve. Um, <laughs> uh, look at that shirt that Josh is wearing. How dare he wear that shirt on my podcast? Well, guess where I'm going right after this podcast. Oh, how I hate Ohio State. <laughs> um, go Spartans. All right, anyways, that's it for this one. I will talk, we'll talk to you guys next week. We record this live every Saturday. And it's every Saturday. I guarantee it's every Saturday. We never miss an episode uh, at three o'clock p.m. Eastern time <laughs> on the the Linux Cast at which YouTube.com slash Linux Cast, where you can find that. You can subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you know that we do go live. Even though it's definitely every Saturday that we go live, you'll never you'll never miss it. Uh, anyways, uh, thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash Linux Cast. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very very much for your support. I truly, truly do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Again, we never miss an episode. We never have missed an episode. Uh, and anybody who says it otherwise is a big fat liar. We'll see you next Bye. week. Bye.